Hugging Face has become the home of open source large language models. And in this video, we're going to learn how to download one to our machine and ask it some questions. Let's open up a Jupyter Notebook. We're going to start by manually downloading a model to our machine. So we're going to import from Hugging Face Hub the HF Hub download function. Now, if you don't have a Hugging Face key, you'll need to go to the website to generate one. And once you're there, go to your profile, click on Access Tokens, and then click on New Token. And you can put in a name and then a role. So I find I could get away with read once you've done that. Uh, click on Generate Token and then copy that uh, token to your clipboard. Yeah, I would advise you then put that as an environment variable. So I'm using hugging underscore face underscore API key. And then we're going to use the osenviron.get to load that into the hugging face API key variable. But if you're just playing around, you could just hard code this in there. Next, we need to choose a model to download. Now, the general advice is to pick one with a lower number of parameters, and those are usually included in the name. So on this one here, fast chat T53B is the number of parameters. So this is 3 billion. And the suggestion is that 7 billion or lower is supposed to work well on consumer hardware, such as my laptop. So 3 billion should be pretty good, but you can browse around and pick another model if you don't like this one. Uh, we can then click on the file names so we can see which files we need to download to our machines. You can see there are a bunch of files. PyTorch is the main one, but there are then a bunch of uh, configuration files as well. So we're going to grab a copy of all of those file names. And what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, put the model, put model ID as a variable. We'll put all the file names that we need to download uh, in an array. Uh, and once we've done that, we're going to iterate through them and we're going to call this HF hub download function, passing in the model ID each time, the file name each time, and then our key. And it's going to download those and it's going to print out where they go. So you can see they go into this cache folder, uh, hugging face, and then the name of the model. Uh, and if you downloaded other models, they would go in there under a different directory. Now let's try running the model. But before we do that, we're going to disable the Wi-Fi on my machine, just so you can see that it is genuinely using my machine and not going uh, out to the internet. Uh, so I've got a couple of functions. I'll include all the code in here in the description. Um, so we're going to check our connectivity. Then we're going to toggle the Wi-Fi off. Then we'll sleep just for a little bit. And then we'll check the connectivity again. And you can see if we run that, you can see it says I've got a, a, an IP address on my local network. I then disabled the Wi-Fi and now I don't have an address anymore. So we're just our machine sitting on its own. Next, we need to initialize the model. So we're going to import some, some classes from the Transformers library, and we're going to create a tokenizer and a model. Now, when you're creating the model, the, the class that you're going to use there can be uh, auto model for seek to seek LM, or it can be auto model for causal LM. And which one you use depends on the, uh, the type. And so you can find that by looking just underneath the name on the Hugging Face uh, website, you can see what it, what exactly type it is. And so for, for us, it's text to text uh, generation. Uh, once we've done that, we can create our pipeline. This will take a little bit of time. So we're going to speed things up a bit. And you can see the only output we got here was a HTTP head request to the config file. Now I haven't, now I haven't looked at the code, but I assume it was checking whether we've got the latest version. Uh, but actually, the pipeline will continue to work even if that check fails. So we can ignore that for now. Right, now we can actually give this model a try. So we'll, let's ask it a question. So let's say, what are the competitors to Apache Kafka? And so you can see, give it a few seconds and it gives back a response. So the first sentence is pretty good. So a popular open source message broker used for streaming and aggregating data from multiple sources. So that's pretty good. At the competitors, I would have said it's uh, something like Red Panda or Pulsar. It's in fact said Spark, Storm, Flume and Flink. Uh, so perhaps it needs it needs to, to have a little bit more up-to-date information for that one. But that's not a bad, not a bad answer. Where I think this could be really useful is if you want to ask questions of some of your own data. So like put some of your own data into the context where you don't necessarily want to send it like out to the to, to an a API uh, where potentially the data is then looked at by someone who works for one of the uh, LLM companies. So for example, let's imagine I'm putting in a bunch of my, I, I've made up this data. So my name is Mark, I guess that bit's correct. Uh, I'm, I'm, let's say I have some imaginary brothers and, um, and a best friend called Michael. Uh, and I say, just using this context, do you know if I have a sister? And it says, no, I do not have a sister. But you could imagine putting uh, different, different types of data in. So you could imagine put in a bunch of data and say, hey, summarize this or, or something similar to that. Uh, if you liked this video, you might like this other one that I did showing how to get a consistent JSON response when using OpenAI.